Hi there, welcome to 10 minutes lecture series in computer science. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about transactions in DBMS and the properties called ACID properties that must be followed by every transaction. What is a transaction? A transaction is a collection of operations that form a single logical unit of work. See these examples here. The first one is about transferring money from one account to another. The second is about purchasing of an item. See, these two transactions involve multiple instructions, multiple operations. In the first case, it involves two update statements. When you transfer money from one account to another account, you have to execute two update statements by deducing amount in one account, by adding amount into another account. In the second example, purchasing of an item in a supermarket, it may involve multiple update statement or an insert statement in multiple tables. When a receipt is being generated, it's a new receipt, so this may be inserted into a receipt table as a new record. Also, the items purchased by this particular customer must be updated in the existing stock quantity. So that involves an update operation. And the money paid by the customer has to be added to the payment table. So that is another update operation. Depends on the nature of the uh, transaction. It may involve one or more operations. And these operations are collectively form a single logical unit of work. The idea of this logical unit of work is to ensure that a transaction is an indivisible unit. That means neither first update statement nor the second update statement can be executed alone in the first example, for instance. If you want to execute, execute both these update statements or none of these update statements. Such a way it binds all the instructions that is part of one transaction as a logical unit of work. There are certain basic operations in a transaction. They are read and write. When I issue a read operation, that means I read a particular database item into the program variable. When I write the data item, that means I write the value from program variable into the database. So these two are very important instructions. And two special actions also there. One is commit, the other one is abort. So commit is if you have successfully executed all the instructions in a transaction, then you can execute a commit command to make sure that everything is successfully saved. On the other hand, abort is suppose if you are not able to complete the transaction successfully due to some reasons, maybe a um, uh, failure in software or maybe you are not able to get a particular data item. So in such cases, you want to abort the transaction. So in, the, in there, we are using the command abort to stop the transaction. And basic requirements of a transaction, though every transaction must follow this. A transaction must see a consistent database. That means at the starting of transaction, we are seeing a old consistent state and if successfully completed the transaction, we must see a new consistent state. For instance, if you are withdrawing money from your account, say for example, you have 10,000 rupees as a balance in your account, then this 10,000 is seen as an old consistent state because it is correct. The correct value is in my account, so that is a consistent state, old consistent state. If I want to withdraw money, 2,000 rupees from my account, after successful completion, I will enter into a new consistent state where money is updated as 8,000 rupees. Okay, So in both cases, I want to ensure that consistency. But during the execution of the transaction, the database may be temporarily in an inconsistent state because Old consistent value is 10,000 for our example, and new consistent value is 8,000 for our example. 
So in between, anything can happen. Suppose uh, halfway uh, my transaction gets cancelled, so that I want to go one of either of this side. Dur during this time, during this time, it is depends on the number of instructions to be executed. It may be temporarily in an inconsistent state. And one more important property is after a transaction commits, the changes made to the database must persist, even if there are system failures. So these are the important basic requirements. These are collectively called as as it properties and one more important thing is i want to execute multiple transactions simultaneously that must be permitted as well what are as it properties to ensure the integrity of data the system must maintain all these properties to be followed by every transaction every individual transaction to safeguard to maintain consistency to maintain durability so what is atomicity either execute all operations given in a uh, transaction or none if you want to if you if you have any power failure if you have a system failure in halfway during the execution of the transaction go back to the old consistent state if everything is perfect then accept the new consistent state so this is what atomicity is about either all or none the second property consistency is about Execution of the transaction must end up in consistent state. Either it is old consistent state or new consistent state, but in between it is not accepted. And the third property, isolation, is about there are many transactions, we must permit them to execute simultaneously, but each one must be given a feel that all the, trans the transaction is executed alone. There are no other transactions going on at, at this moment. That is, each transaction must unaware of the other concurrently executing transactions. And his last property, durability. After the transaction completes successfully, whatever the changes we have made to the data items must persist in the database, even we have any failures happen. That means, if you have executed a commit statement successfully, that is, a commit statement is a last statement in a Transaction. Once you have reached the commit statement, we ensure that everything we made is everything is correct. So I don't need to re-execute that particular transaction in case of failures as well. So we want to uh, make it, make that uh, as saving, make that uh, changes uh, durable. For example, let us take the transfer of fifty rupees from account A to B. The transaction will look like the one box which is given the left hand side and what happens uh, for a transaction so atomicity should not take money from a without giving it to b that means i started my transaction after executing the statement write a my system failed that means i have to go back into the world consistent state for instance let us assume that there is 100 rupees in account a 100 rupees in account b before transaction and if any failure happens in between a have a new value 50 b is not yet executed in such case i have to go back and make sure that a again it's 100 b is 100 as well that is what atomicity suppose if i executed all these transactions even i executed commit statement then i must see a new value a with 50 b with 150 the consistency is ensuring this one Mon money is not lost or gained for example i don't want to write a new value of a without updating the b value and isolation property ensures that the query should not see a or b until completion that means if there are any other uh, transaction trying to execute simultaneously those transactions must not be able to access a or b or they are not visible to the other transaction the values or values of a and b are not visible to other transactions so that kind of isolation ensures consistency and finally durability means the money does not go back to a suppose if i reached commit successfully committed this transaction that money is already went into b it does not go back to a because the transaction is closed completed successfully completed and closed what will happen in uh, Oracle? For example, Oracle uh, transaction can consist of 
one or more SQL commands. And when you log in, when you log in into SQL Plus, uh, the transaction starts actually. And when you, whenever you type commit statement, then the transaction uh, ends in case of Oracle. And an implicit commit occurs whenever you execute a DDL statement. For example, if you create a table or if you alter a table, or if you uh, delete a table, uh, something happens automatically. That commit happens automatically in these cases. Also, if you want to insert a record into the table, if you want to update a record, each time you may need to execute a commit statement or you can postpone that commit statement for, uh, for a while. Also, you can set, set auto commit on statement to enforce the commit uh, automatically happens after each command. So if you set at automatic auto commit, auto commit on, whenever you execute an insert statement or you never execute an update statement, uh, DML statements, whenever you execute these DML statements, the system automatically execute a commit statement automatically so that the data persists in the database. In this lecture, we discuss about transactions in general and the properties must be followed by every transaction. Thank you.